Hey there, and welcome to the inaugural Subom Reviews. Um, I'm Panic, and so let me just break down exactly how these reviews are going to go. Um, I'm going to give you a close-up look of what's included uh, in the package. From there, I'm going to break down the score. Um, as far as the score goes, we got 15 points for um, build quality, um, 10 points for the how it sets up, um, the ease of setup, and the the different options for setting it up. In this case, where we're looking at the Atmo Mechani 3D, so this is a dripping atomizer, so setup is kind of part of it. Then we've got 10 points for innovation, 5 points for price performance, and another 10 points for the overall vape. As you can tell, like innovation is, is, is kind of a big one for me. Then we take that score and we multiply it by two, gives you 100 points or 100%. So let's break it down and let's take a look at the Atmo Mechani 3D. Okay, so here are the parts of the 3D. As you can see, here's the base. This has a hybrid connection. Mine is currently for the Nemesis. Um, you can get this for the Nemesis and the 69 by Atmo Mechani. Here's my 18650 tube, just so you can see how it goes on there. There we go. So you can see it. Threads are just beautiful. The base also has the serial number. So this one, as you can see, is number 681. This also has, you can see the positive post comes all the way through. Um, there's a little o-ring in the bottom there. There's Delrin at the bottom here to separate the positive post from the outer casing. So there's the base. Next part we have here is the spring. And this spring actually will sit inside of here when we build it up. And that actually pushes up the deck. This is the deck of the of the 3D and this actually Underneath this is the holding tank where the liquid will sit. This here is a little fill screw. Um, this is actually, you can see it's got a very, very, very tiny hole all the way through it. Um, and that's where you'll fill your liquid into the holding tank here. These are your two negative posts, which actually screw on to the outside of this negative post. Really, really quite ingenious design. You can see there, there there's uh, two posts, two screws. Um, so this is great for making dual coil setups. This here is your airflow control. Now the airflow control ring um, has uh, 1.2, 1.8, and another 1.2 millimeter hole in it. You can see both those holes right there. Um, so this is for using like single coil setups with the one or the 1.2 millimeter holes for dual coil setups. Now this confused me at first because this is your top cap and it still kind of confuses me a little bit as, as to why this is set up the way it is. So we've got 1.8 millimeter hole here. We've got another 1.8 millimeter hole on the opposite side, and this is for dual coil. Now, the airflow control ring has 1.2 millimeters either side of it for dual coil setups, so you're restricted to using the 1.2 millimeter air holes for dual coil. Now, if you're into cloud chasing and that sort of thing, 1.2 millimeters is very, very small, um, unlike my Origin, which has uh, two 1.8 millimeter air holes, which in my opinion is just about perfect for for uh, dual coil builds. Um, but you'll also notice um, 
there's within the top cap it's not really a hugely reduced chamber although there's not a ton of room in there you'll see this is actually I don't know if you can see there it's not that thick so it's got this machining machining marks here to allow you to see kind of where your holes are going to line up when I put this airflow control ring on you'll see that these will line up with these other machining marks down here this is great at Momikani um, as I think one of the only companies that does something similar to that um, but you'll see you can do say if we're doing single coil let's find our 1.8 millimeter hole and do a single 1.8 single 1.5 or a single 1.2 millimeter airflow whereas if you're doing dual coil the it's got dual 1.8s but on the airflow control you've got dual 1.2s so you're restricted to using that 1.2 millimeter airflow unless you were to modify your airflow control ring now i'm not a big fan of modifying higher end devices like this um, but in this particular case, I think I will. Um, I like this atomizer enough that I think I'm going to keep it for a long period of time. But that 1.2 millimeter restriction for that airflow control, let's put that up there, for me is not quite, not quite open enough draw for me. So, so you can see dual 1.2 millimeter holes on there. So this is your top cap, this is your negative posts, your tank with your hybrid connector, and this actually just slips right over the top here, slides in really, really easy. Once this is in here, we're going to build this up right now, I'm going to put a two like a dual coil build on here, this just spins on. And there you go. You can adjust this um, fill hole to be anywhere along the bottom. I kind of like to have it just right in the center. You can have um, coil here, coil here, and then this will actually feed the juice when you push the top down, it squirts the juice up. Works really well, really well. Aside from this one thing, um, You'll notice this is this is actually where your juice is going to pop out of. The screw actually goes in that little hole right there. Now this screw, I've got a, I think this is an 18 gauge um, knee, uh, blunt tip needle. Um, this needle does not fit in there whatsoever. Fumbling stuff all over the place. So this, this needle doesn't actually fit. Um, so what I've been doing is the same thing. Um, I know Todd has been doing this as well. What I'll actually do is I will, if we put this on, I'll just show you how this works. I'll actually push this down, drop. I will actually drop about 40 or so drops into, into here. And it actually takes the 40 drops no problem whatsoever. Um, just drip my juice in. And then it'll automatically pop up and suck the juice back down through that fill hole. Now I do keep this fill screw in there. Um, although you may or may not want to do that. So, um, so that's the parts of the 3D. So you've got your base, your tank section with your built with your deck, and you've got your airflow control top cap. Machining on this is amazing, um, as as is with most Admiral Michiani products. Um, the threads are amazingly smooth. The uh, screwing the negative um, posts on there is, is just buttery smooth. Screwing this onto the the Nemesis, you can see it just just threads on just perfect. Um, so there you go. 
So the Atmo Mechani 3D, let's break down the, uh, the build quality into its uh, three parts here. So we'll go machining, five out of five. It's a great little device. It's, it's built really, really well. Um, I can't fault the machining whatsoever. <clears throat> Next up, we have the threads. The threads, we don't have very many threads on here. Um, there's obviously the threads where the uh, negative posts thread onto the, the, the tank. Um, those are great. The threads onto the Nemesis, buttery smooth, amazing threads. Five out of five for threads. Next up, the overall aesthetics of the device. Um, the 3D is a little bit larger than your average dripper. So I've got a trident here, and just to compare, you can see the uh, the trident is quite a bit smaller. That being said, you are losing the top cap of the Nemesis. So it's not actually that much bigger because it doesn't have that top cap. It's also got this machining here at the top, which kind of acts as a heat sink, which is great. I haven't had any of my drip tips get overly hot using this. I'm running about a 0.6 ohm coil on it here. And I, I, I actually like the look of that. That being said, the 3D logo itself, I'm not a big fan of it. It's big on the outside of there. So so I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. Next, we're going to look at setup. The ease of setup, I'm actually going to give about average. Um, it's not super easy like uh, the IGO W or it's a little bit harder to set up because you've got that spring in there. But it's not it's not a huge deal. It's not super easy by any means. It's definitely a little bit more complicated than most strippers. Setup, I'm going to give it an average three out of five. It's not super easy, but it's not super hard. The options for setup, obviously you can do single coil, you can do dual coil. If you wanted to, I'm sure you could get a quad coil in this. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not overly hard to, to build on, obviously, um, but you do have those 1.2 millimeter holes, which are blocking the dual 1.8 millimeter holes. So setup, um, Obviously, you can do three different sizes for single coil, but out of the box stock, it comes with 1.2 millimeter air holes for that air airflow control ring. So I'm going to give this a three out of five for the uh, for the options as well, just because I would like to have seen it with uh, 1.8 millimeter air holes for the uh, for the airflow control. And then we got price over performance. Um, I haven't really talked about the performance yet, but uh, it's an expensive atomizer. It's uh, 110 euros, and 110 euros um, works out to about $160 Canadian. Um, for a dripping atomizer, that's really expensive. I think my origin was about 110 or so, obviously plus shipping. This guy I bought directly from Atmo Mechani in Greece, it worked out to 160 plus shipping. So. I would definitely say that, th that this is on the higher end. It doesn't perform quite the way I would have hoped out of the box. Price performance wise, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Innovation. This is the big one for me. This is out of 10. Innovation wise, nobody else makes a dripper like this. Atmo Mechani really come up with something innovative and new. It exceeds my expectations. It works as advertised and for anything new, that's not always the case. I applaud Atmo Mechani for, for the, the innovation that's gone into this. 10 out of 10, no question. The overall vape, I mentioned it before. Um, this is out of 10. It's a little bit on the tight side for a dual coil build, on, in my opinion. Um, it does vape very well otherwise. So I'm going to go on the the plus side of halfway, and I'm gonna give it a six out of 10 for, uh, for the overall vape. Almost exactly the same as the K-Fun Lite. If you like the airflow on the K-Fun Lite, you'll like this. Um, I find my K-Fun Lite a little bit, a little bit too tight, but uh, that's just me. So I'm gonna give this a six out of 10 for, for overall vape quality. That's my breakdown of, of the uh, Atmo Mechani 3D. So let's do a build on it and uh, see you guys afterwards. So I've got a coil wrapped here, six wraps of 28 gauge. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to 
put, you'll see this piece goes under this washer, pulling that under the washer there. I'm gonna pull that really tight and I'm actually gonna use my pliers here. There we go. I'm just gonna hold that down and screw this negative post in. Get that really nice and tight. This one we're gonna wrap around. I'm just gonna do this finger tight. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do this really tight. So there's the first coil in there. Um, so that looks pretty nice. Um, it's not too close to the post. It's not too far. Um, it's just about right. And what we're gonna do once once we get the second coil in there is we're gonna we're gonna heat that up on the uh, the nemesis, and we're gonna we're gonna squish that together using uh, using these pliers again, and that'll give us some nice little micro coils. So the next one, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So what I usually do is I I leave those. Uh, wires that are on the positive post, I usually leave them quite a bit longer. So if I need to, I can loosen off that post and I can lengthen or shorten the, the legs on my coils if, if they're not firing evenly. So I'm just gonna snug this up pretty tight. Not too tight, you don't wanna over tighten it too much. Um, the nice thing about these, um, these posts is there's lots of room you'll see actually there's where's my other screwdriver you'll see with these washers it actually there's lots of room for getting your wires underneath um, and you'll see here this these uh, Phillips head screws are are great for for building on um, a lot of people prefer a hole in the post. Um, I could go either way. I sometimes find I, I'll break off my canthal and have to rebuild a coil if I snug it, snug my uh, my screws a little bit too tight on those ones with the post holes. As always, I've got a MNKE 18650 battery. Snug that down, and we're going to do a quick little test fire of this guy. So this actually looks pretty damn good. You can see this one coil is firing a little bit earlier than the other one. Let's just let that cool down, try it once more. They're actually firing fairly evenly. So that's good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wick this with some cotton balls now. Just thread it through. Should come through here very easily, but should be see a little bit of resistance there you don't want it too loose but you don't want it too too tight either the tighter it is the like the the cotton itself will actually expand quite a bit once once it gets saturated second coil and again this is this guy's just about perfect it's not too thick, it's not too thin. So there we go. You don't ever want to dry fire cotton. First thing I do is I prime it with a little bit of e-liquid. You can see it soaks right into that cotton really nicely here. So there we go, nice and primed. Tons of vapor. You can hold about 1.5 mils of juice inside of there. I've got um, Pearl Necklace by Funky Vapes. Amazing juice. Funny name, amazing juice. We'll put this on top. And then I usually drop about 30 or so drops into here. So I'm just going to line up those air holes with my coil. Okay, so what I'll do is I will push this down. 30 drops in here. It's 
20. There's 30. Now when I let go, you'll actually notice it sucks up. So every time you squish it down, it's going to shoot the juice up. Every time you let go, it sucks the juice back down inside. So we'll put this back on my nemesis. And fire it and see what happens. Yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the build. Um, I'm going to uh, drill out those 1.2 millimeter air holes. Um, I do like the vape on it overall. Um, the draw is a little bit too tight for me, as I've mentioned a number of times now. Hopefully this is the first of many more reviews to come. I co-host a show on vapestrong.ca on Monday evenings, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. Um, that's vapestrong.ca. The show is called Beats and Clouds. Um, I provide the beats and some of the clouds. Um, my co-host Vinny from coldturkeyjuice.com, um, he provides most of the clouds and uh, a lot of the banter. I would very much appreciate it if you guys would tune in. We're sponsored by this really cool company called Apothecary. They provide uh, mods and atomizers of very high quality from all sorts of different vendors. And uh, they, they sponsor our show. They give away... They, give us the ability to give prizes to you guys away. Um, if you guys tune in on, like I said, Monday evenings, um, nine Eastern, six Pacific on vapestrong.ca, I would very much appreciate it if you guys would tune in. Um, I very much appreciate you guys for watching. Please subscribe and uh, tune in. Hopefully next week I will have another review up and you guys can... Uh, Tell me what you think on uh, facebook.com slash groups slash sub ohm and uh, leave your comments there. I would very much appreciate what you think. Anyways, cheers guys. Keep vaping.